And so, just going back to, you know, your career today, what would you say were, were the highlights of, or what are you most proud of? Well, I think, I think the highlights are always the first time you do anything. I mean, going back to what you were saying before, which I didn't answer, but, um, you were saying, um, you know, how did you know you'd become famous? How did you know you'd made it? And, and I think it was doing Top of the Pops in England, which was the, uh, the, the main TV show, the national TV show there in England. Um, and doing, doing Top of the Pops was, it was a show that I used to watch every Thursday night as a kid, and that was what you, that was your focus of attention of the week, was what's on Top of the Pops. And then all of a sudden, you're on there yourself. Yeah. And I thought, oh, how did that happen? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm on this show that I've been watching as a kid growing up, and I'm on this show. So I think, you know, so the first time we did that was when I realized that we were actually quite a successful band. And, and, but I think my favorite thing have always been like the first, the first time doing everything, the first time we played a show in Europe, mm-hmm. the first time we did our own headline tour of Britain, and the first time we came to America, we came to America in the, you know, 1980, and we played the last club in New York, and, uh, and that was so exciting to live in America before, and it was just like being in, in, in the TV field. I mean, I used to watch Kojak as a kid, and I was like, wow, I'm having Kojak. Yeah, it's like being on a film set, isn't it? It's <laughs> like being on a film set, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then playing our first big tour, tour around America ourselves, and playing places like the Universal Amphitheater in, in, in LA, and, and um, things like that, which is so exciting for us to do. Going back to the, the, the tour that you're currently doing, I actually saw you um, last time you played in LA at the music box there, and the show, okay. the show was fantastic, and um, Andy still has all the, you know, the energy that he did have before, and, you know, the great stage set, and I was just wondering if you did anything to prepare for two, because you're playing quite a, a lot of dates this time round. So. Yeah, and we played quite a long show as well, so... Um and, you know, we're not getting any younger. So, uh, <laughs> but Andy does a lot more, you know, I, 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 I ask them in the people and play and sing. So, but Andy does a lot of running around stage because he's the, you know, the showman of the show. So he has to kind of go into training before we go on the road <laughs> and he, he cycles for miles and miles and miles before the, before the, before the gigs come up. So, yeah, yeah, we do have to put in a lot of work and, and we rehearse, we're sickly for rehearsing because we're not like some bands, you know, they rely on their computers. A lot of electronic bands you mm-hmm. be amazed how much they rely on their computers to play back lots of stuff and they just add a few things on top. Mm-hmm. We're really old school and we love to play. So, mm-hmm. but, to, but to be able to play the show live, um, like playing all the instruments live, it's, it's really, it's quite, um, it's quite a feat to get it really tight. Mm-hmm. So we, we rehearse like mad before we go out on the road. We rehearse on them. You've just put this image in my head now of Andy cycling around, listening to his headphones, uh, to the fans by Kraftwerk, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think he kind of dresses like Kraftwerk, really, so it's not like It's in his local personal. <laughs> so, um, after, after you finish the tour, like, does it take a while to adjust, to get back into, I guess, a normal lifestyle, and what do you do to unwind or relax when you come back off to yeah, well, you know, my, my partner, I walk out in after a tour, my partner goes, who are you? <laughs> Stranger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how come you've got a key? How are you looking? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a, it, there is a bit of an adjustment when I get back. You know, my job bites their leg because my job doesn't recognize me. Uh, but no, it's, we, we just kind of, there is this kind of weird thing where if you do a, a long tour, it'll get to five o'clock and you're sitting at home and it gets to five o'clock and you go, well, yeah, I should be doing a sound check now, and I wonder what time we're on stage now. It's like, oh, no, I'm not home here. No, I've been adjusting then. You pick up the, the, pick up the house phone, and, and you're calling room service, and you realize you're at home. <laughs> you're phoning down into the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, what, what are your plans after this film tour? Are you, um, have you got any plans to do any more recording? Are you going to take a break and then go back to it? Or what's well, on the, the pipeline? Yeah, yeah, the plan is, is that we're going to, um, uh, we, we stop, our last show is on the 22nd, uh, this month in July, so we're doing it, it's our last thing we're doing, and then, and then we're going to take the rest of the year off. I mean, we've been working for, we've been on the road really since March, I mean, we, we got back for a few weeks over the summer, but, um, but we were working on two really, so we'll, 
been working the whole year, so we're going to take the rest of the year off. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in January, we're going to... I mean, Andy and I have already made a car from the new album. We've got four mm-hmm. songs already for it. And there is three just finishing for the state. So the fans have got something to look forward to for next year? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the album's underway, the new mm-hmm. album. Uh, it's going to be called English Electric, is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's already underway. Great. So, uh, so I'm going to work on that, and, and that's also... Um, so you remember a band from the 80s called Propaganda? Of course, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, on Cloudy, the ZT2 right. label. That's right, on yeah. ZT2, yeah. <laughs> Cloudy is um, my partner, mm-hmm. and, uh, and so, you know, my life partner, mm-hmm. who's the singer of the band. And so uh, we have another band on the side called One Two, uh-huh. and uh, I, I was in the festivals with them over the summer as well as, you know, doing their own deep stuff. So. But uh, we're, we're making a new album sort of over the next year as well, in which we've got lots of them already. So we'll be finishing off that and working with Andy. So we're going to, next year, not tour very much, we're going to just be recording all year and release an album in 2013 and go do a world tour. Mm-hmm. Well, sounds like exciting stuff. We look forward to that. Um, yeah. I'd just, just like to uh, finish up with a few quick-fire questions. Um, yeah. Any unfulfilled ambitions? Um, well, my, if you could call it an unfulfilled ambition, I, I, I really wanted to be a electronic engineer and software designer, mm-hmm. and I never fulfilled that ambition. So. Life got in the way. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah, so the, the band got in the way, otherwise <laughs> it would have been a software designer. <laughs> <laughs> you might have been wealthier by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, probably, yeah. I'd have been in, in a high position in Silicon Valley somewhere, you know. Mm. Okay, apart from the current members of OMD, what would your ultimate fantasy band be? You know, like singer, guitarist, keyboard player, drummer, if you, if you could play with any band, make any type of music, who would be in the band? Um, well, Ralph Potter from Craft works with you on keyboard. Mm-hmm. Um, I think David Bowie would be on lead vocal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Brian Eno would be on second keyboard. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Wolfgang Fleur would be the electronic drummer from Kraftwerk. Right. Um, and probably Tina Weymouth from Talking Heads would be on bass. Sounds like a good band to me. <laughs> 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 uh, what would you say was your favourite OMD song and album? Um, I think I've got two favourite OMD albums. I can't decide which one I like more. I like our Architecture and Morality album, which I think is one, a uh, souvenir. Of art, and made it all mm-hmm. and it, was just, uh, it was one of the artists that had a sort of community of fans to it. Mm-hmm. Which I, I, but I also loved Appleships, which was on the experimental album and on the social album. Mm-hmm. The social album anyway. um, and uh, it, but there's some fantastically interesting things on there. That was, it's a very daring album, and I'm very proud that we made that album. Mm-hmm. Your favourite. Um Sleeve, either album, sleeve, or single cover from OMD? Uh, well, I, I would have to say it's the very first we did. It was for electricity when we were on Patchy Records, of course. Yeah. And it was a black sleeve, and, and all the lettering on it was in black. But it was in boss, and it was all raised up. Yeah. And it was it's almost like Braille. Yeah. And, it, and it still looks fantastic now, so I have to say uh, electricity. Mm-hmm. And what music are you listening to at the moment? Well, I'm listening to Robin, mm-hmm. Scandinavian singer. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been listening to I listen to a lot of arcade fire. I'm, I'm a huge fan of arcade fire. It's a good, mm-hmm. it's good on the road music. Right. Mm-hmm. What else, really? Mm-hmm. But lots of stuff. I, I, I've got so much music on my iPod, but I just <laughs> put it on. I, I just put it on random yeah. and just put it on the bus and just sing. In, so you get some pay, you, get, you get some musicians that don't want to listen to to anything else. You know, so they don't want to be influenced by this or that. But, and you get other people that just want to, you know, take a sample of everything and just you know, enjoy everything. Well, I do. I mean, I'm, I'm a music lover, so so I, I and, and I think I don't want to. I don't. Want, I've never wanted to be in a bubble mm-hmm. of, of my own band and that set and nothing to penetrate it. I think. I think it's important. You get great ideas from what other people do. Like, mm-hmm. artists go and see 
a lot of art so they get the entire piece of technique and, and musicians are, are, are like that, some are like that, and, you know, you need, you need to be fed ideas and go, oh, that's a good idea, but if you did it this way, it would be even better, and, you know, that's kind of right. how you think to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, just like to say, uh, Paul, thanks very much for spending the time to talk to us today. Um, I'm playing at the LA Nogi Theatre on Friday, 7th of October. Um, wish you all the very best with the tour and your future recording projects. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure speaking with you, Dave. You're welcome. I look forward to coming to the gig on Friday night and seeing you there. I'm sure it'll be a fantastic show. I hope you enjoy it as much as the music box. We're playing some different stuff. Uh, we're playing slightly different sets. Uh, because we played here not long ago, we're, yeah. we're playing about five or six different songs that... Um, the people, uh, you know, from our past, really, that, mm -hmm. that uh, we didn't play last time to keep it fresh. So. Sounds good. Good combination of the old classics and some uh, new albums as well. The new as well. The combination of albums, yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks very much. That's been uh, great talking to you, and um, all the very best.